How's it going guys? It's Electron Man back out here uh, working on this mini PA70. Uh, actually we have completed it and uh, we're actually in the testing phases of it now. Um, I don't know if you can see this but this is a uh, this is a antenna analyzer or a uh, SWR analyzer a nano VNA virtual network analyzer and uh, Basically, uh, the tune on this is really good. Um, Pass-through tune, I'm running at, uh, let's see, 1 to 1.38, which is definitely acceptable. So I'm, uh, I'm definitely happy with the, with the SWR tune on it. Uh, nothing to worry about too much there. So let me hit, go ahead and disconnect that. So that I can hook an antenna and turn this off. Um, anyway, kind of kind of going through the testing stages. I'll be honest. I've already kind of messed with a little bit just to see what we were doing, and and uh, it's got some pretty good news actually. Um, I'm impressed with it. Um, a lot of you know a lot of the ones I read they don't work, never worked. Uh, well, this thing fired right up. Um, I haven't had any problems at all with it functioning. Uh, I will get into some details of some of the negatives and positives and negatives that I found with it so far. Um, probably the uh, first thing we'll do is here let me go ahead and get her all wired up here hooked up and uh, I don't know maybe I need to give you a um, first one I'm, I've got the amp on right now and I'll, I'll pull the I'll pull the camera back up here in a minute and show you everything but basically right now we've got the we've got the amp powered up I've got it set at 13 5 volts um, she's at idle right now pulls a little bit under one amp at idle and uh, which is supposed to, that's about where you want it. I actually have the BIOS setting at 3.2 volts right now. Um, basically, the schematic I read said it should be at 2.7, but 2.7 was too low. It was almost down to, to just almost grounded. And um, and I went and read forums and stuff, and a lot of people said that you know 3.8 is a good place to have it, which I agree 3.8 is probably uh, the peak output, but uh, it was really spattered and clean. So anyway, long story short, 3.2 volts is where I found the device to be at best as far as uh, wave signature, splatter, etc. Of course, I don't have any uh, pass filters on this right now, but but if you notice here, and I've got the amp in right now, hopefully you can see that carrier. Oops. Hopefully you can see that. But uh, really, if you looked at the shoulders there, and uh, that's on a 5 megahertz band there, and I'm going from, uh, from 30 to 183 megahertz. So... I've covered a pretty broad band there, and I mean, you look at this. It's not really, I mean, I, it could use some pass filters, but uh, you can see when I put the modulation up, it jumps up, spikes in here, but I mean, honestly, that's not bad as far as I was expecting to see a lot more. I mean, it's got, it looks like a secondary there, but uh, pretty clean looking uh, wave actually on the spectrum analyzer. Anyway, let me go ahead and shut that off. I'm just kind of wanting to show these different stats I'm getting. and I'm sure your thing you're probably most interested about is, is the output power, which we'll get to that here in just a minute. I wanted to kind of show you what I'm seeing as far as functioning. Uh, Heat-wise, these resistors definitely, if you can for any period of time, they don't get like burning hot, or I haven't yet, but then I haven't dead keyed it for a long period. And with the 3.2 bytes I got set at it, well let me, you probably want to see, this is probably the grand finale what you're interested in. But uh, anyway, let me this camera sorry i know it gets jerky when i do this but you probably need to see that as you can see here's my uh my power meter and uh that's a 100 watt scale there and so it's uh obviously you got on the 100 watt scale you've got um one through ten basically so right there's 15 watts 20 watts 30 watts just look through the uh the one through ten, you can see what is this? It's one, two, three. So, well, let me uh, transmit it without the amp on first. Let me turn the amp off. Here's the radio I'm, I'm transmitting. Oh wait, I gotta go into the into the ten watt scale. But so the radio is dead king, two and a half watts. <whistles> peak about <whistles> about six watts. So basically that's what the uh, the stock radio is. I'm just using this little midland I have here. I don't know why. It's kind of, it swings good. And test this amp out. I, I did a lot of reading in on this amp. You really, five watts maximum in. And uh, really two and a half, three watts. About what I got this radio set up. It's just about perfect for this 
little amp. So anyway, let me go ahead and turn the amp on now. I've now activated the amp. Let's see if I can put this picture together. And I got the amp activated, and watch what happens to the 10 watt meter. Bam! Bam! Yeah, yeah, she's putting out more than 10 watts. Okay. So let me get to the 100 watt scale here. And uh, now, like I told you, 1 watts here, 20, 30, 40. So anyway, let me go ahead and key it up. It's about a 35, 38 watt dead key. swinging right at 50 so they claim it's a 70 but I'm actually seeing about a 40 watt dead key with the 50 watt swing and it's not a real hard swinging radio so so it's really more like a 50 watt not a 70 watt I, I'm like I said I got the bio set pretty low and I've got the voltage I could actually bring the voltage I could probably get 70 out of it but I think it would uh, be pushing the limits of, of the amplifier at, at this state it really I mean it runs pretty good it's not getting I mean you see, I've been keying on it. And, hell audio. Hell audio. There's 50 watts all day long. Hello, 50 watts. And I mean, I'm not getting any, you know, I can still. They get warm, but they don't get to, to where they're going to smoke or anything. And I think if you really wanted to, you know, if you were a motor mouth and really wanted this continuous duty, you could definitely uh, up those to surround existers. There's a couple things I'm thinking of that you could definitely do the to even get it to where uh, it can run more cycle, but so far I've I've did keep it for a couple of minutes at a time, and and uh, definitely uh, not overheating. I'm sure if you did keep it for 10 or 15 minutes, it might smoke it down. It's not designed for that type of continuous use. It's really designed more for SSB, I believe. And uh, that gets into my next discussion. So the cons are the kit for I think I gave 17 dollars. It works, as you can see, folks. You watched me build it from from the ground up, and you've seen the 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 output. Um, they claim 70, I'm getting 50 peak. I'm, you know, dead keen about 40. Still not bad on a two and a half watt input. So, so it's doing a job and I didn't use anything extra special. This is exactly what came in the kit. The only thing I did was uh, provide the power wires, I think is um, about all I've done with this so far. Anyway, um, sorry that phone distracted me, but uh, back to the pose are, it works. I mean, I would say as advertised, um, the heat sink really is not even getting that warm so i you know i thought i might have had too small of a heat sink but it doesn't seem to be generating that much heat um some of the negatives are well one negative is is i don't know if you know right here you probably let me go ahead and put this back here i'm probably moving that thing all around and it's not near as pleasurable to watch it when it's bouncing around i mean i watch youtube videos all the time too and i don't i don't want to feel like i'm on a merry-go-round what did i do with my Okay, I'm back after an in-depth hunt. I'm finding my little holder to hold the camera. Jeez. And I'm clean, and there's not a whole lot laying around here. I'm still losing stuff, but uh, yeah, it's easier for me to put something to the side. And I'll tell you, the older I get, the more I do that. I think there's a... I wish a... Uh, what is the name? I can't even remember the name of that now. See, that's what old age does to you. What was the name of that uh, show? The Twilight Zone. And uh, there was this one where these... They would stop time and then they would move stuff around with you and then start time back up to mess with you but anyway that's what it reminds me of but back to this amp uh like i said 40 watts 70 out but some of the negatives are one thing right off the bat i uh which i don't know where that little piece went here just this little guy right here this is where i had the jumper set in here to uh pull the push to talk uh jumper on and off and uh yeah, I stuck the jumper in, I guess, too good when I went to pull it out. I pulled the whole piece off and pulled the pad off of the circuit board. So that kind of stuck. That's not really the kit's fault, but it was, I guess it's just pulling it too hard. And uh, there's not any real support other than it was just soldered to the pads of the circuit board. So anyway, I ended up lift, lifting uh, one of the pads off the circuit board. But it, it no big deal. I went in here and traced the, the path, and I just used a little wire to bridge it. I'm going to leave it in uh, push-to-talk mode all the time anyway. I mean, who's going to be pulling a jumper on and off and that's where we get into number two about this amp and uh i realized now when i went back a couple saw a couple other ones showing it operating i was wondering why are they pulling that push to talk jumper in and out well here's here's the caveat um basically the way this amp was sold is it sold as like a yezu replacement or something so basically that jumper right there that you're jumping in and out I'm guessing that was intended to go into an external keyer on a radio. And um, that was how the, the amp knew when to switch on and off. So whenever you put the jumper in, 
it fires the relay, so it's kind of like right now it's technically with me jumped right there. It's in it's in transmit mode right now. It's not it's idle because I have no current going through it, but it's sitting here idling. That's why it's idling at a little under one end, is because of the fact of uh, it's active all the time. Well, which that's fine except for one thing. Whenever you want to listen to pass through, you got two choices. You can either turn the amp off to let it pass through, or pull the jumper out so that the the receiver will pass through. I noticed at first whenever I um, you can take it right here, and believe me, I went to search and I thought maybe I had done something wrong with the amp anyway, but if you can listen here, I don't know if you can tell that, but that's with the amp on. I've got a signal generator going through right now. With the amp on, if I turn the amp off, listen to that, amp on. So you're, you're losing like 6 dB because the amp's active all the time. Instead of like a normal uh, external amp that we're used to, wherever when you key, that's when the relay goes down and makes the amp active and puts the RF through. This one is basically, it's sitting there active idle but idling all the time till you do input. So my next one, will, which will be, this is part four testing, which testing it past everything. I mean, it does everything that it was advertised to do, um, but the um, the push to talk circuit is not designed for RF sense, I guess is the best way. It's designed for an external trigger. So my next project's gonna be, and I hope I don't blow it up. Hey, it's a $20 amp, but uh, my next thing is I'm gonna see if I can uh, do a little uh, the Electron Man, uh, circuitry and build me a uh, a king circuit like you have in a normal amp and utilize this relay to where it's sensing RF off the input and from there that's when it kicks the relay so that you don't have to unplug and plug the push to talk if you're trying to use it for something that doesn't have an external key. I mean the other option would be is you could have it set up to where uh, you could run off that jumper you could run two wires with a uh, with a foot pedal you know I don't know if any of you guys ever use a, a transmit pedal but you know a lot of your bigger amps that's the way they they transmit you know so whenever you transmit you just hit the pedal well that would that that circuit would work great for that because that's basically what it is it's short or off on or off so you, you could definitely wire something up like that with a foot pedal that you know or a little switch that you want to talk when you want to hit the amp you hit on and off in and off but I want it to be like you know like any other amp I want it to be like a Texas star or even you know you know a typical amp to where when you key the circuit, that's when it, it activates and pushes the amp up. So anyway, that'll be uh, part four. But so far, I mean, hey guys, I built it. If you follow the instructions that I gave you, and I did it step by step, it will work. I promise you, as long as you don't skip any steps and follow what I did. I mean, back to 40 watts, <sighs> swinging 50. I mean, uh, and like I said, I could push it higher. I could get it up to that 70, but I'm not going to. It just seems to be a pretty good balance right here. And that's with a 3.2 volt bias volt adjustment in it. And you saw my SWR is 1 to 1.138. So we're good across the board. And, and actually, it's not splattering as bad as it would. I would, you know, if you're going to use this, I mean, I know FSCC will tell you, you, you need to have some uh, some pass filters in there just so you're not splattering all over. But looking at the spectrum, it really didn't look that bad. But anyway... I'm just rambling on now. I hope you enjoyed this part four. Um, this is Electron Man. Have a great day, and please like and subscribe.